الرحمن الرحيم السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله أشهد أن محمد رسول الله Indeed, Allah is the greatest and his power is complete. He is the wisest and he has commanded mankind with perfection. He perfected the deen of Islam to be our guidance and is a gift to us that is enough for us. Mankind in his anthropocentrism has come to the madness that they can compete with Allah, but they cannot. Mankind is not capable of competing with Allah. When Allah says, riba is haram, there is no amount of rational that can change that. When Allah says riba is haram, is a mercy to mankind. When today sciences are built, improving, proving that riba is good for people, it's only in a state of madness that has set upon people. It's normal that the kuffar will create a science like economics, which is founded upon riba is halal. But it's sad to see the Muslims sending their children to these faculties because they think maybe they can learn something from them. Allah has given us the clear guidance and he sent us Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam who was the living form of his wisdom and he got clear proofs in the form of the book and his sunnah. We have a model. We have a way to move forward. As the rector clearly stated, we should not focus on what is haram, as in what we have to struggle against, but the real focus should be what is halal. When we get rid of the banks, what comes instead? What is halal? What is the model? Certainly, for the last 50 years, what the Muslims have tried is either they surrender to the system of riba that it was given to us, or they try to Islamize New York. Islam is not to Islamize capitalism, as in banks, Islamic banks, insurance, Islamic insurance, paper money, Islamic paper money, credit card, Islamic credit cards. But we have our own system. A system that has been built by the best of mankind. That first community in the miracle city of Medina, Al Munawara, at the time of Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Look in Medina to find the perfection of mankind in history. Is all in there. The first thing that you notice is that the money 
that the people used in, in Medina al Munawara was not based on pieces of paper, but it was based on real commodities. They used gold, they used silver, they used barley, they used many things. The fundamental principle of money in Islam is freedom. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran, Tijaratun a'an taradim minkum. Trade with mutual consent. Nobody can impose any commodity and force the people to buy from you a particular commodity at a particular price. Like nobody can say, if you want to buy rice in Indonesia, you have to buy from me. And my price is one million rupees. That is not a'an taradim minkum. That is extortion or fraud, but not trade. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala doesn't say it, tijaratun a'an taradim minkum, except with money. There is no exception. Money is also a'an taradim minkum. Paper money is made of compulsion, law that says the people of Indonesia must use this currency. And only this. There is no antaradim minkum here. This is compulsion, a system that we inherited from our colonial masters, that they still live in our heads like the rector suggested. The currency of Islam for 1,400 years was the gold dinar and the silver dirham. The dinar is mentioned in Quran and the silver dirham is mentioned in Quran. We do not impose gold and silver. The government doesn't have that authority. The Khalifas of Islam, they simply minted the coins, not forced them among the people. When the people were free, they chose gold and silver. Even before Islam, they chose gold and silver. When the people were free for 5,000 years, gold and silver was the currency of the world. We believe that when the freedom is again achieved, when the age of darkness eliminates, the people will return to gold and silver. When Islam shines again upon the world, then the dinar and the dirham will become the currency of the Muslims once again. Indonesia Raja Merdeka Merdeka. Merdeka is not yet. Not yet. Merdeka will be achieved when there is no riba in Indonesia. When there is no central bank, when there is no paper money, when the banks have gone, that day we will go through the streets and we will say, Merdeka, Merdeka. That is the day that we are willing, we are asking for. The same for Saudi Arabia. We want you to be free. The currency of the world is this. It's a piece of paper. It promises to pay dollars, but they don't have it. 
the system that it was born after World War II declare that this is the mighty currency of the world. Now, since this is only a piece of paper backed by nothing, you have to understand. And that this system, they give us pieces of paper. We give them oil. We give them gas. We give them services. We give them everything. When they want more, they print more. You don't need to be a genius. You don't need to be a scientist to understand. In these circumstances, they always win. Always. It is irrational. This is madness. And we have to say, no. Enough. We have our system. When Dr. Mahathir, the former Prime Minister of Malaysia, spoke about the gold dinar, he saw that the Muslim nation can come together as one Islamic trade bloc with the gold dinar as the center. Like the euro is to the European Union, the gold dinar is to us. Except our currency is a stronger than the US dollar. It has no inflation. One chicken at the time of Rasul, sallallahu alayhi wa it costs one dirham coin. Today, in Indonesia, you can buy one chicken for one dirham. 1,400 years later, the value is the same. Now compare it with this. At the time of independence, the rate of the rupee to the US dollar was about 3. Eight. Today is 10,000 to one US dollar. It means your currency has been devalued 3,000 times in relation to this in less than 100 years. Considering that this already was, has lost 95% of its value since you achieve independence. These has fallen 3,000 times faster. Inflation. What do you think is inflation? Inflation is nothing but theft. Theft. You are being robbed right now. The money that you have in your pocket is losing value. And you don't even know. It's a hidden hand is taken from you. When you go to sleep, this hand will continue stealing from you. But you are not aware. So you don't see it as a theft. When you become aware, you will stop it. I live in Pakistan right now, where the inflation is 20%. You had this type of inflation in the past. 20%, which means the poor are becoming poor. And nobody can save them. Because they're economists. Our trained people, they have been trained in the West. They cannot see. The gold dinar and the silver dirham will eliminate all this instantly. Continuously. For when you bring freedom, inflation will disappear. Internationally speaking, it will end up forex. No more forex. The gold in air in Saudi Arabia is the same as in Morocco, is as in Indonesia, as in the North Pole. Because gold is the same. Every time you want to trade with your brothers in Saudi Arabia, you don't have to go rupee, US dollar, US dollar, Saudi real. You don't need to go through this madness 
of control that they have imposed upon us. But dinar, dinar, finish with this market of 5 trillion US dollars of Forex that produces no benefit to mankind except they take profit from all of us. The golden art will finish that. The golden art will bring us together for the first time as a nation. The golden art will allow us to see the end of river. For if you eliminate, if you introduce golden art, the banks will die. You cannot have banking with golden art. Instead of banks, what did they have in Medina? They had another institution called Wadia. The Wadia is halal. But what is the Arabic word for bank? There is no word in Arabic for bank because it never existed before. Sudan is probably the country in the world with the largest gold mines in existence. The people of Sudan are literally sitting down on the largest amount of wealth that there is in the world today. Yet they are poor with a currency which is worthless. All they have to do is to dig out their own currency to lift themselves up. Indonesia has gold. But our gold goes to Australia, and they give us pieces of paper. The wealth is here. All we have to do is to take it. The end of capitalism is inevitable. And the reason is Allah himself in the Quran has declared war upon river, harb min Allahi wa rasuli. When Allah declares war on something, who do you think is going to win? But do you think Allah is going to win us in the future? When Allah declares war on something, how do you think that thing will last? It will be eliminated instantly. When Allah has declared war on Riva means Riva is already dead. If you see power in the banks, it's an illusion in your eye. It's a waham, an illusion. They have no power. They are dying. Because Allah has declared war upon it, it means it will collapse. We will be the only force to bring a solution to that world in positive terms. What matters is not that the banks are wrong, that Wall Street is wrong. The Occupy movement is saying that. The Europeans are waking up and they are saying the banks are wrong, not the politicians. They realize the politicians don't matter anymore. It's the financial systems control the politicians. And they are saying the economics is wrong. The bankers are thieves. But they have no solution. They say what is wrong, but they cannot formulate what is right. Only Islam can do that. This is our contribution. Then these people will come to us. They will follow us if we show them the way forward. They are waiting for us. The state of Massachusetts, only a few months ago, adopted a new resolution to make gold legal tender. They had followed the state of Utah, the state of South Carolina, and the state of Virginia, I think, another three, in declaring gold legal tender. There are another 20 states following the rebellion is a rebellion against Wall Street because they think the US dollar is a fraud. They are more 
Americans who believe the US dollar is a fraud. There are more people in America who believe this is a fraud than in Indonesia or Saudi Arabia. What's wrong with us? That we cannot see it. When even the Americans are saying, but don't you see, this is madness. Since Obama came to power, conservatively, conservatively, the people have calculated that 23 trillion, not billion, trillion US dollars have been injected into the economy. 23, conservatively, probably a lot more. He has doubled the national debt of the United States. Everything that America was indebted from George Washington to George Bush, he's doubled it. Allah sent us this man to accelerate the pace of the end. This is coming to an end. The accumulative disasters are coming to an end. It's saturating the world with madness. 23 trillion US dollars. Let me put this thing in perspective. With that money, they can buy the GDP of Indonesia for the next 25 years. That's why they don't need to conquer us. They can buy us. They can buy the oil of Saudi Arabia for the next 100 years. That's why they don't need to conquer us. They can buy us. As long as we are blind, they throw pieces of papers to us. We give them everything. This is the colonialism of the head. This is the hypnosis of the time. If you think this is money, you have been hypnotized. Only Allah can save you. This is a promise to pay 100,000 rupees. Did you know what is a rupee? A rupee is a silver coin. It's about 10 grams. It's about three times the weight of this. If we go to the Bank of Indonesia with this bill and we tell them, please pay me 100,000 silver pieces, do you think they will pay you? Do you think they will pay you? Of course not. They had no intention. You are trading with something and you don't know even what it is. The people are being robbed and we are not even aware of how. This is our state. This is where we have fallen. This is why this conference is important. This is why the intention of the rector speaking about Mohammedia in these terms is important to all of us. Because I am telling you, rector, if we bring the dinar to Mohammedia, we will bring it to Indonesia. If we bring it to Indonesia, you will wake up the Arabs from the dream. And the whole world will use dinar and dirham again. Riba will go. The key is this country. And the reason why it's easy in this country is because of this. Because this is ridiculous. It has too many zeros. Far too many. Only Zimbabwe had more than you. This is on, only signs for those who can see. To fight against Riva, to eliminate Riva, is not a punishment. It's an opportunity. When Allah says something is haram, it's not taking anything away from us. It's giving us something giving us the science of prosperity. 
When Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran, Halalahul Baya wa Haramul Riba, these are the signs. Trading is prosperity. This model of trading is called Mu'amalat. Ibadah is the relationship between us and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The relationship between us is mu'amalat. The model of mu'amalat is the amal of the Ahl al Medina. The model is the practice of the people of Medina at the time of Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And in the three generations that followed, Medina again. Medina and Arabic language are our tools. But we have to teach the Arabs Arabic because they have forgotten. This is a dirham. This. Not the currency of UAE. A dirham is a silver coin. This is a dinar, gold, dahab. Not the currency of Kuwait. Not a piece of paper. This. The weight of one dinar is the mithkal. The weight of mithkal is 4.25 grams. And Omar ibn al-Khattab said, one mithkal is one dinar. And the dirham, the weight of the dirham, must be seven tenths of the mithkal. The one mithkal and seven tenths of the mithkal is known as the standard of Omar ibn al-Khattab. This is what a dinar is. This is what the dirham is. But also souk, the most important institution in Muamalat is not the gold dinar, it's the souk. When Rasul Salam went to Medina, he made a masjid and a souk. And he said, the souk, the sunnah of the souk is like the masjid, it's a waqaf, it's a public property. There is no fees, there is no membership, there is no taxes. Nobody can stop you from going to the masjid and saying, have you paid the July fee? There is no membership in the mosque. You cannot go to the mosque and say, this is my space. First comes, first serve. That is the way of the souks. For 5,000 years, again, even before Islam, the marketplaces were public market places. You cannot privatize the marketplace. It's impossible. There is no Tesco's, there is no Walmart's, there is no malls, there is no supermarkets. There is only public market places in Islam. We have gone into the madness of becoming, wanted to become, like New York. So we have brought these supermarkets back to our lands. And I can see in Indonesia, you are following the wrong track. No supermarkets, public market places. The public market places will eliminate unemployment in Indonesia, just like the gold dinar will eliminate inflation in Indonesia, because there will not be possible. The public marketplace lowers the threshold of businesses so that everybody can enter. The marketplace is the source of prosperity. The, market, the public marketplace is the sunnah of all civilization. It precedes Islam. The Romans, they call it the Forum. Before them, the Greeks, they call it the Agora. In every city in Europe, you will have a marketplace. In every city of Islam, you will find public marketplaces. They were all wakaf. Where is the market of Malam? The public marketplace of Malam. There is nowhere. And in Jakarta, and in Kuala Lumpur, and in Mecca, and in Medina, it's all gone. We have malls in Medina and, and Mecca. We have malls in Khartoum. 
but we don't have souks anymore. Because we think we need Tesco to be civilized. We need dollars to be civilized. This is the colonialism in the head. The souk of Islam. How do you know a souk is a souk? Because there are caravans. Oh, caravans. I forgot. The Arabs don't know what caravans mean anymore. They think they speak Arabic. They don't speak Arabic anymore. A caravan is the sign of trading. You have eliminated the caravans and you have made trading haram. Halalahul baya wa haramul riba. What you have done is halalahul riba wa haramul baya. That is what you have done. No caravans because there is no marketplace where to go. The caravans from Mecca to Khartoum cannot go anywhere anymore because there is no marketplace either in Mecca, not in Khartoum. The caravan is not a line of camels. The camels don't make the caravan. You can make a caravan with trucks, with planes. The caravan is the gathering of the people, an institution of sharing infrastructure, logistics and warehousing so that the trading can be conducted together. Caravan is the sign that there is somewhere to go and trade. It's the sign that trading has become healthy. Without marketplaces, there is no trading. There is only monopolistic distribution. In the food, this monster company in your country that controls, I don't know, 70 or 60 or 70 percent of the exports of food in this country, this monster company is the opposite of the caravan. That infrastructure should not belong to a company, should belong to the people of Indonesia. Indonesia Raja Merdeka Merdeka. Get rid of in the food and then you will be a lot freer. No supermarkets, no monopolies, but trading itself. Halalahul baya wa haramul riba. Allah couldn't make it more clear. Trust Allah. And if you do not understand, trust Allah. For He knows what we don't know. And when we get confused, Allah show us the way. He is the light of the heavens and the earth. Not Paul Samuelson. Not the American or the administration, but Allah Himself. The power is with Allah. There is no la hawla wa la quwata illa United States. <laughs> it's wrong. Some people believe that, but it's wrong. They are confused. It's la hawla wa la quwata illa billah. And there is no but. If we follow Allah, we will become strong. But if we follow the kuffar, we will diminish ourselves and we will disappear like it has happening to us. Of all the Arabs, I believe the Sudanese will open their eyes before. I think the people in the Gulf, they are dreaming. But the Sudanese, they have good mothers. You will liberate the Arabs. It is through you that you will open the eyes of the rest of the Arabs. And tell them what the golden area is, because they don't know. Tell them what the souk is, because they don't know. As in this land of Indonesia, I have seen that you have courage, that Allah has put hardness in your economy, because Allah loves you. The irony is that this is the place of hardship, and this is the place where things can change. In Dubai, they think riba is good for them. They're lost. Nothing you can do there. But here, Mr. Ambassador, the people are poor. The people wake, will wake up. It is a chance. Help us. 
We can do it. We can bring the gold dinar. Because it's not difficult to mean the gold coin. It's difficult to create a currency. You have to force it upon people. But here, if we go throughout Indonesia and we say to the people, what do you want? You want the gold coin or do you want this paper? 99% of the people will choose this. The people will know it immediately. In, in Pakistan, it's the same. You don't have to argue with 20% inflation currency. You don't have to argue. If you say to the people, what do you want, this gold, or the inflationary currency you have, the majority of the people will choose. Because Allah is merciful among the poor. The rich, they think they are going to lose. The changes will happen here in Indonesia, and they will happen in Pakistan. In the places of hardship. And I, as I said, I believe in Sudan. Something will happen. You will be the door to all the Arabs, I believe. And Allah has blessed you, not with oil, also with oil, but with so much gold that you will be able to give us supply gold for the whole of the Ummah. It's all underneath your feet in the desert. All you have to do is to dig it 60 meters and take it out. They don't want you to prosper. They fear Sudan. That's why they separated the south from you. They took it away from you. But it doesn't matter. Allah loves you. And the gold, take the gold out and liberate the ummah with it. I beg you to do that. My message is simple. Trust Allah, for He is the guidance, truly the guidance. If you do not understand the things that I am saying, ignore it. But trust Allah and look for yourself. Get a gold coin and look at it and use your heart and say to yourself, what? is natural here. And if you cannot find an answer, ask your son, find a 10 years old boy, and tell him, what do you think is better? Probably that 10 years old has more fitra than any one of us. It's clear, look into your heart, don't fear anything. Those, the people will come to you and they will say, the evil people will come to you and they will say, if you go back to the golden era, you will become poor. These are people touched by madness who want to scare you. Following Allah will not bring you poverty. It will make you the riches among the people in the earth. For this country is blessed with wealth in endless ways. Bring back the way of Allah and you shall be above the nations. Continue following the way of the Kuffar and we will sink farther and farther down. We have come here to this gathering in Mohammedia with one great expectation, to bring forward ideas of which you may have heard before but with implementation tools. You want to know how do you bring the gold coin? How do you mint it? How do you establish it? How do you sell it? Which institutions will hold accounts in gold and silver? Can you have a payment system based in gold and silver? All these answers will be answered in this seminar. I'm only opening the door to the themes, but to stay and listen to what these experts have to say, for there is a need, light, for all of us. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.